Good afternoon and welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library, and also the Ucha Creek, now Grove Town Library with our new building there. And of course, we're staying home, staying safe right now with our classes, and we're doing all our stuff virtually right now, just keeping everybody safe and everything. I'm very glad that you're here joining me today. <laughs> and as folks come into the classroom and stuff, uh, I wish you a hello. So welcome to class. And as I like to say before we start class and stuff, please feel free to post any kind of questions or uh, comments or questions that you have into the chat. Happy to answer any questions that you have. And of course, the big question I always ask is how can I help, okay? What questions do you have? How can I help? I have a little bit of sun coming in from outside, which is kind of funny. So, but, excuse me, that's what's going on back there. How can I help? What questions do you have? And I'll tell you about some of our other upcoming classes that we have coming up this month. So today is our last class of the week, our advanced photo editing and layers class we're doing today. And we're gonna be covering a lot of things. We'll be covering a lot of kind of Photoshop-like stuff. So this kind of is just to answer the question of what else can I do to do some um, photo editing? So can I do some, some simple kind of Photoshop-like editing? Absolutely, you can. We're gonna do some step-by-steps on how to do that. We're gonna pull up some pictures, remove a, a mole off of someone's face, talk about removing some uh, erasing uh, like some wrinkles or something and then we'll talk about fixing a photo and also then we'll delve into layers and, and the neat things that you can do with that like making part of it uh, we're going to colorize part of a picture and let the rest of it be black and white so just kind of a fun project to do with our layers now next week we're going to be doing let's talk about Libby at 2.30 and then on the 20th, we're going to just finish up with our second part of our cord cutting class at 11 o'clock on Facebook, the Harlem Facebook page, uh, cord cutting streaming services, free and paid apps and devices. So come join me for that. And then the afternoon, we're going to be doing our Facebook on our Columbia County Library Facebook, cord cutting and antennas. So if you're actually looking for doing uh, part one, part two of that class, it's kind of like part two, part one. 20th is what I recommend so you can see, see the cord cutting streaming services in the morning and then the afternoon cord cutting antennas. But if you are following along uh, with the, part, the antennas first, the 20th is the time to see the antenna one and then the 21st will be the time to see the streaming service one. But you can see them at any time of course. We're actually doing three gadget helps on each library's Facebook pages this month and then we're going to be finishing up the month with doing Chess 101 on YouTube, so come join me for that. And also on the 28th on the Grove Town Facebook, we're gonna be doing um, venturing into my class, um, into my kitchen, and we'll be doing Instapot Facebook class, beginners, and learn some basics of that. And then it's a new class, uh, Cooking Basics uh, Air Fryer. So we'll learn about air fryers and stuff, and some cooking basics with that. So come join me for that. I'll be doing that live from my kitchen. Just a little side note, our libraries now have switched over from RB Digital to Libby with our eBooks and audiobooks. Um, we have a class coming up next week about this. Uh, all you really need is your library card, install the Libby app, look for Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System, and then choose Georgia Download Destination and have your library card and it'll pull it right up. Yes, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channels for updates. Or how do I find my YouTube channel? Search YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pull right up. Right now, we're actually having a subscribe drive. If we get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, 
then we'll get our own customized YouTube address. But let's go back and let's start our class. So again, welcome, welcome, glad that you're here. And I'm gonna go ahead and post into our chat. So does anybody have any questions so far? So I'm loading up our handout, which I'll post into the chat. So you can download and view it and follow along with me as well. So here's the handout. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me pull up. Try to zoom in a lot because I know not everybody's watching this on a big screen or whatever. So welcome to Advanced Photo Editing and Layers. Uh, this is kind of a part three to our photography series and then we have a video editing, um, adds on a video editing class as well. And a printing basics uh, class is coming up as well. Let's talk about what we're gonna cover. We're going to talk about photo editing. We're going to be using the GIMP free Photoshop like alternative software. The uh, reason we're using that, of course, it's a free uh, app that you can use. We'll talk about resizing an image, changing the color balance of an image, just kind of looking at different filters and stuff. We'll look at our brushes and then we'll look at our blemishes repair. Like I said, we're going to, a guy's got a mole in his face, we'll actually remove that mole. And then we'll use the healing tool to work on some some uh, wrinkles that he has and also then we'll work over and we'll use our cloning tool and learn about that then we'll work on that as far as fixing a or repairing a old soldier photo of someone and then we actually have blur sharpening uh, going on and then we'll talk about our different layers and our project is going to be separating objects from its background okay and then selective colorization and then list some other projects you can do as well and then we'll talk about saving and exporting. Okay, how's that sound? Sound good? Okay, sounds good to me too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way here. So let's talk about Photoshop or photo editing. We're gonna be using the GIMP software. It's a free Photoshop alternative. All you need to do is go to GIMP.org So we'll go to gimp.org, click where it says download, and it shows a few pictures here about using GIMP. Like I said, it's completely free. Click the download, go down here to where it says directly download, unless you have a BitTorrent, but just mostly just click here to download and install it, okay, for Windows. I will point out that yeah, the website does have tutorials, so if you go up here to tutorials, they do have a good list of different tutorials to do. And we've actually taken some of the tutorials and, and kind of transformed it or changed it so we could use it with this class, okay? But that's a great resource, it's just GIMP.org. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my GIMP software. Make sure this is the latest real quick as it loads. Yeah, I'm using uh, GIMP 
So let's go right ahead back to our handout. Let's talk about getting around GIMP, okay? So we have our different brushes over here. Of course, we have our menu system, the file, edit, select, and view, and everything. We have our main area here, which is our photos. We also have our tool settings here. So if you click on any of the tools here, it'll actually show the tool settings or options. Over here on the right side, it also will talk about your, your brush size or your brush that you're using as well. We'll briefly talk about that. And then this is where we check out and change our layers, okay? All right, so and uh, this is, talks about our color. Right now, this shows that the main color right now is black. And if you click this, it'll switch over to white. All right, so number one, well, I just kind of talked about this. So number one is our main toolbox, okay? Contains a set of icon, icon buttons used to select tools. So you can add a uh, brush pattern, uh, active icons. Um, you can change those by doing edit preferences toolbox. Number two is our tools options. This is one where they've selected the magnifying glass as one option to zoom in and the other option is to zoom out. There's our image window. Um, many images can be open at the same time before you do anything useful in GIMP. You need to have at least one image open, which is this right here. We have our scroll bars. We have our right toolbars, which consist of layers, the channels, some other sections that we're not going to be talking about today. Also, we have our undo history as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So I've got my, well, I actually want that to be in the background. And then there you go. So let's go ahead and let's hit file and open. Now I'm actually going to be working with some photos and I think I can go ahead and share those with y'all now. Uh, give me one second. All right, so this will give you access to the folder. So you could download all the images that I'm working with today. These are all uh, stock photos. And I got them from a, um, like a Photoshop tutorial magazine years ago. They're just stock photos. Okay, so I need to go to, let me see. There it goes. So there's our class photos. And if we click on it, it will give a little bit of a preview. So first, let's start off with the wrinkle before. So wrinkles before. Oops. Why is it so big like that? Oh, if you do get anything that says convert, just click convert and it'll take care of it. Okay. So here's our picture of our guy here. Now, one of our first things we need to learn is our tool that allows us to uh, zoom in and zoom out. Also realize the other, this other tool we need is the undo button. So where's the undo button? If I click edit, it'll be undo right there. And of course there's redo as well. So edit, undo. So let's go ahead, let's click the magnifying glass. It should be right here. We'll have two options, zoom in, which is selected right now, and zoom out as well. So if I click zoom in, and we just kind of click on his face, it allows us to zoom in. All right, so we see that our picture here has some issues. Let's see some bags under his eyes. So. Let's do a little bit of Photoshop stuff and see if we can fix that. The good part about this is having uh, part of two faces. We're going to focus on this side of his face. 
and then we'll actually get to see a big contrast at the end okay so click zoom in so you have his his face pretty big or if you need to move around back and forth there's the scroll bars there as well okay now if you want to zoom out then you click zoom out and then you left click and it will zoom out so a lot of the time we are dealing with just zooming in and zooming out when we're trying to edit something okay all right now oh let's see well I, I got in front of myself I'm sorry <laughs> that's funny I've skipped over a part that we were we're supposed to be doing learning more about our interface so we're going to leave our gentleman here alone for right now I want to go ahead and open a different image so let's do file and open we'll get back to him and let's go to the one that says lifeguard hut and click open if it asks you anything just say convert okay and you'll see that his picture is still up and available right there. So let's go to this great uh, lifeguard hut. Zoom in so it's a little bit bigger for us. Uh, so a big thing that people ask me is, okay, that's great. Um, I want to do some more advanced stuff. And one of the things I need to do is I need to resize or scale an image. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why you would need an extra program to be able to do that because the ones we talk about in class don't really do that. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So let's go up here to where it says, let's see, which one is it? I think it's images. So click images and then go to where it says scale image. So image, scale image. And then you'll get this. The big thing about our scale image is we don't want it to be stretched in any way. So if we resize anything, we want to make sure that this lock is on. That's what it looks like when the chain is broken. Make sure the chain is on. So if we decrease, let's say the width of something. So if, let's say if I drag this down and make it a thousand. You can type it in too, see. When you click the other, it'll automatically resize it for us, okay? So it keeps the what they call aspect ratio. And if we hit resize, we'll see that it changes it. Oh, <laughs> I hit reset. That was my fault. So let's go back. Let's do a thousand here. Hit scale. There we go. Now, how do we know if it changed size? Well, if I go undo and I look at the very, very bottom, you'll see the name of the file and the size of the file. Okay. And when I look at the very top, it'll talk about the, the, the pixel by and by. Okay. So right now it's 2048, and if I go back and I do redo scale image, you'll see now it says 1000, okay? So that means it worked. All right, now, the big one is for some reason working with web graphics or for whatever reason it's passport photo, something, someone says, hey, we need to have a picture of you you know, or, or this picture needs to be certain size by certain size, that's the way you can do that. All right, now let's look at colors. This is our color balance, and then we'll work with our filters, okay? So we're looking at our color balance. Alright, 
right? So let's look at our color balance. So let's say colors. And a lot of these we're just going to kind of play around with, but let's go to what's known as auto first, okay? So if I click colors, I go down here to where it says auto. It says equalize, white balance, and we have a color enhance. Let's click the one that says equalize. Oh, that's interesting. Look, isn't it? All right, let's do edit undo. All right, let's do colors, auto, go to white balance. Ah, gave it a little bit more contrast, didn't it? Okay, let's do edit, undo, colors, auto. Let's see, let's go to color enhance. Ooh, it kind of made it uh, more colorful, didn't it? So these are the auto settings. If I do edit, undo, these are kind of the auto settings. Okay, you can switch these pretty quickly. But let's talk about doing it by hand. So if I go up here to color balance, let's click that. And the good part about it is you can see in real time, you know, your choices here. So if I do just kind of tap and change the colors, you'll get to see it live. Okay. Now, one of the things that I used to talk about connecting this up with um, maybe if you had a color theme, if you're going to print something, uh, and you'll actually see movies and stuff that they actually overlay the movie with just a certain type of color theme, and then it looks all uniformed, okay? All right, I'm going to cancel on that. Let's go to colors. And let's look at um, exposure. Exposure is our white balance and black levels. If I kind of drag that up here, too much there. The black levels kind of make it more denser as you can see. So just kind of play around with these. Shadow highlights. Brightness, contrast, levels. You kind of get the picture. Now, if we go down here to components, um, if you, there's colorize. We can actually choose a color that we want it to be like. Kind of get the gist of it so some dramatic changes that you can do all right now let's go ahead and let's look at our next setting let's talk about our excuse me let's talk about our filters okay so our filters go ahead here click filters this is where kind of we can play around with the fun stuff there's things like blur focal blur that could do some magic things like that and a lot of these have before you say okay or run it will um, you know give you some questions about it so here's blur lens blur pixelize see it makes it look like that a whole bunch of different choices variable I don't know that one, so let's do edit, undo. Circular motion kind of blur. It's like it's being turned. 
post. Oh, that's interesting. It looks like it's moving in my mind. A whole bunch of different ones you can do. Let's talk about enhance. Let me see. De interlace if it was something from like a old um, TV monitor or something. Here's a noise reducer. That could be used later for something. Let's say it's an old photo that we're trying to repair. Let's see, edge detection. But let's go ahead and let's play with the fun stuff. Let's look at artistic. And how about cartoon? That's interesting, isn't it? Makes it look like it's a little bit more of it's like a hand drawn cartoon, doesn't it? All right. So if I look at artistic. Oilify, let's look at that. And you can really change some of the settings here. So now it looks kind of like it's an oil painting. I could see that a little bit. You know, it's not as detailed. Let's see. Cartoon, clothify, what would that be? Oh, that's interesting. So it gives it like a texture. This allows you to generate things on there. So I do. Van Gogh. Van Gogh sometimes can take a little bit of it loading and load it down here. But it's mostly trying to kind of oilify it. Still loading. It's got to wait a minute. Anyway, it's really neat because they have different filters that kind of goes beyond because it does generate stuff. It goes beyond than what, you know, just like a social media filter can do. I can lightly tell that that looks a little bit better actually. All right, if I do undo, you can slightly tell. All right, so that's kind of playing around with our filters. You know, some major ones here, adding a border. Let's see, noise, a pattern, checkerboard, oof. Oh, that's painful, sorry. Let's see. Lava, huh? <laughs> well, that's interesting. All right. Now we don't talk about it, but there is a way that you can actually have it so it will do some animation too, but we won't discuss that right now. All right, so let's talk about our brushes. A brush is a pix map or set of pix maps used for pa um, painting. GIMP includes a set of 10 paint tools, which not only perform operations that you would normally think of as painting, but it also operates such as erasing, copying, smudging, lightening, or darkening. So one of the things is you can actually use the brush pattern. So that's a bunch of brushes there on the right side that have been drawn, but you can actually use that as far as trying to do 
let's say the the airbrushing or whatever trying to make it not look like it's just a normal circle or whatever but what we're going to do today will actually take care of that but you can at any time choose or change what you want your brush and you can install new brushes as well okay so you can actually use pictures or objects to create brushes so so this is the kind of different brushes that we have installed on this version here and if you were going to use it just to draw something like a black excuse me a black color or something you click the little square here to change your color and you just choose these over here and as you see nope <laughs> what is it doing okay it thinks that I have chosen hold on you go over here and choose paintbrush so as you see that's kind of what a brush does and sometimes you can get it to generate different types of brushes like it'll turn or whatever some brushes may already have a set pattern with them You can change the settings on these pretty regularly too. Over here on the right side, we can change the size of our brush and a whole bunch of different settings in there, making something dynamic. This is actually a brush that comes with. Uh, Photoshop which is kind of interesting <laughs> and then this as well for some reason so a brush can do more than just be you know here's some lines or something when we're actually going to be doing our you know the heel tool and all that you can choose brushes too but usually just choose the circle one that's up here and it just kind of looks like that okay all right, so I'm not going to save that, I'm just kind of showing you around a little bit. Let's go ahead and let's reopen. Let's go back to our other picture. Okay, and let's zoom in on our gentleman. And we're going to work on the eye there. Okay, so I'm going to go up, and first we're going to be talking about the healing tool. Okay. Healing tool is a close relative to the clone tool, but it is smarter to remove small failures in images. A typical usage is to the removal of wrinkles in photos. Okay. Now, one thing we have to do is we with for these two tools we're about to talk about, we have to set this what they call the source. Okay. The way we set the source is we put our brush on what part of a picture we want it to basically kind of copy over and then we hold down control on our keyboard and click that and that's what the source is where it's going to get the information from okay so let's do that in practice it'll make a lot more sense so basically I want to go up here to my brushes and you see that it has the uh, looks like a band-aid H is the heel tool so if I click that in a minute we'll use the clone tool which is there as well now recently they actually changed these buttons you used to there was more buttons over here but I try to teach y'all based on the default of whatever it is so if I go up here to the heel brush if you don't see the heel brush right click it's right click your mouse and you'll see the choice of clone brush a different kind of brush or healing so let's choose clone and it will show you the size and everything here and when we move on to the surface up oh, see let's see that circle that's way bigger than what I need so let's actually change the size of that circle well 
Whoop. Uh oh, I may have done something. So I clicked the wrong thing. So we've made it smaller. Now we can actually see it. Let's make it down to about 20, I think. Or 10 should be really good. 10 should be really good for our purposes. Okay, so I actually want to make sure that I'm choosing the heel tool, which is the letter H on your keyboard. You could hit that as well. You'll see our circle. We want to make sure the size of our heel brush is at 10 right now. And kind of our goal is we want to take some of the stuff here, the information that's here, and kind of merge it or meld it into this area, and it will get rid of it. So let's start off here. So let me put my, my, my source brush here, Con hold down Control, click it, and then when I move away, we'll see that there's a brush still there. So that's my source. So when I kind of start tapping here, kind of see that some things are starting to kind of disappear okay now you might need to move your source around do some tapping and the heel will try to kind of meld those together keep moving your original source you'll kind of get the gist of it after a while Now it's not perfect, but when we zoom out, try to compare. Whoop, I did too much. So what you think? It's not perfect. If you spend a little more time than what we did, you can make it look a lot better. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's go up here to where he has a little bit of crow's feet going on right there and maybe some on his forehead as well, okay? Now let's look. Ah, much better. Much better. Okay, let's go up here and let's see if we can get rid of the forehead wrinkle. Our 
heel brush. You'll see it just kind of melds those two things together. So what their heel brush is really good at. All right, so zoom out. Look at that. So that forehead thing is now gone. Okay, now let's zoom in. And what we're going to do is we want to move this mole here. Now, I could use the, the heel brush, but it would not be as effective because we want that area to be covered with uh, image cuts or clips from a different area and put on top of that. Okay, because if it melded it together, it could mess up the color balance. So let's look at the next thing. So the clone tool, the clone tool uses the current brush to copy from an image or pattern. It has many uses. One of the most important is to repair problem areas in digital photos by painting over them with pixel data from other areas. So, if I switch over, and I do have to do a right click here to clone, or I just hit the letter C on my computer. I have my circle here. I hold down Control to give my source, okay? And then I get over what I want, left click, hold, and you'll see it's copying from the original source. It's not blending it together. And guess what? The mole now is literally completely gone because we copied different parts of this part of the image and just put it on top of there okay did you think it would be that easy there you go looking younger already at me so is there anything that you don't like that we want to get rid of this chin rift thing or whatever it is? Look at that. And if I want to go back and make sure the heel brush, let the heel brush kind of meld those things together. There you go. There's your heel brush. And some of the reasons why this is very effective is because the human eye, we kind of, you know, blend, lean over stuff if it's a little fuzzy or meld it together. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to our next part here. And we're going to talk about using our, our blur and our smudge tool. Okay. So we're going to open up a different picture. Let's go to File and Open. Picture we're going to open this time is, let's see, Fields is what we're going to open. So click Field. And if it does ask you anything, just say Convert. There you go. And there's our girl in our field. Now, the first class in our camera series here that we're doing, the big thing about it is, is trying to basically create a uh, you know a different perspective trying to get our camera to use the aperture properly so something is blurry maybe the background or something so it's a little gives a little more focus on your main character that you're trying to focus on well we can do that by hand and have a little bit of a trick there okay so the blur uh, the blur sharpening tool uses the current brush to locally blur or sharpen your image. Blurring with it can be useful if some element of your image stands out too much and you would like to soften it, okay? So let's try that now. So I'm gonna zoom in here on our left side. And the big reason we do this again is so that when we zoom out, we can see a difference. 
So one of the things is I feel like the trees are just standing out way too much. And when we go down, I feel like these, these, the rows of wheat are standing out too much too. And let's go ahead and let's choose the blur tool. It's like a finger smudge. If I right click there, you'll see smudge, blur, sharpen, and dodge. So choose blur. And I think the pit or size of our brush needs to greatly increase. Maybe 150 or so. I think that would be good. It also talks about the sharpness of it, but I think its default settings will be fine. All we're really going to do is we're going to kind of go in circles here. Because we're trying to focus on the girl not the wheat in the field. All right, getting the feel of it already. Just so the girl is the main focus, okay? I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to blur out the trees behind her even more. Just little circles. Now, if you ever have to deal with any kind of textures or that's when you can choose a different brush up here and it'll give it different textures, okay? But we don't really care about that. We just want everything neat, kind of near her to look like it's further away. Can you tell the difference? So this is our own depth of field that we're creating. So if we zoom out, yeah, I can tell a difference. So you see the wheat here is more blurry than here. So that means that she stands out because she's the one, she's our subject and our, you know, what we're trying to, I guess you say promote in the picture. Mm -hmm. And you can tell a little bit about these trees being a little sharper than over here. Now, the other thing that we can do is use a smudge tool, okay? Smudge tool uses the current brush to smudge colors on the active layer or a selection. It takes color, it, it takes color in passing and uses it to mix it to the next level, the next colors. It meets not a distance you can set okay so this one's a little bit more unique uh, and I will tell you this what we're about to try I've had it where it looks good or sometimes it just looks terrible okay so be prepared to that so if I right click where it says the blur smudge the blur tool I can choose smudge this time and kind of my goal is you know maybe you need for over their arm or maybe you see a celebrity or something like, well, is that really them? Have they changed the shape of their body in some way? Maybe they have. So let's kind of play with that real quick. If I get here a little bit and push up just a little bit with my smudge tool. You see that? Smudge tool just a little bit. There you go right there. And if I actually switched over to my clone tool, Okay, make my brush a lot smaller. And then cloned. Oh, went a little too far. <laughs> I might be able to fix that by using the, the brush again. <laughs> right, 
funny. So a little more time spent, we can make that look a little better. But the smudge tool kind of puts it into a little bit of a liquid. Um, and there you go right there. All right, so the smudge tool, we use the blur tool a little bit. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about our layers, okay? So the best way I can describe layers, and I will tell you this, working with the layers a lot of the time is not very intuitive. You basically just kind of have to follow steps and then try to do those same steps in your mind over time. So basically layers are, think about kind of onion paper. So for this picture here, this gimp, they've taken the picture of the, I guess it's a fox or something. And then they've made it so the layer above it, there are certain parts of it that are transparent. So then we get this and it kind of kind of has it so it it's kind of dims out this the book or whatever it is image there. And then we have the gimp on top and this layer with the line and this layer with the words and what they've done is they've made certain parts of each layer transparent or opaque at some point so that it can go through and either see the, the lower levels okay introduction to layers you can think of layers as a stack of slides using layers you can construct an image of several conceptual parts each of which which can be manipulated without affecting any other part of the image layers are stacked on top of each other the bottom layer is the background of the image and the components in the foreground of the image come above it okay now I did want to go ahead and I think I've gotten up in front of myself again I sure have let's go ahead and we're going to work on repairing the um, old picture from what we covered with our blur tools and the rest. So let's go back to file and say open and we want to go to the picture that says cracks before. I got ahead of myself again. So here's cracks before so let's just kind of pretend that this is like someone's grandfather or something and they said hey would you fix this picture for me I want to get it printed so you know other people in the family can can have it or something I go sure we can make it look better. So learning from what we have let's kind of zoom in a little bit now a big one is is that there are there's these circles or watermarks or something like that we can get rid of those pretty easily now we want to use the clone um, tool to do that we want our brush to be a little bit bigger than it is right now let's see yeah that should look pretty good about there now, if we did do the heel tool, because this is kind of mostly a black background, what could happen is you'll get this gray smear there. So we don't really want that. We do want it to be copying from this area onto there so it kind of keeps the same color, okay? So let's do control where we want our sources, click, and then hover what we want. Click a few times and it should mostly be gone okay I'm gonna click here change my source and then click here now if you think there's a little bit too much of a distinction or a difference you could then use the heel tool basically in the same place but once you have gotten it, you know, the tone pretty close to each other, then when you use the heel tool, it will be completely gone and kind of morphed um, into each other. All right. Oh, my brush is a little big for that, so I'm going to change it down to about 20. kind of go in a circle 
All right, now it did mirror this little mark right here. So if I go here, click, that should take care of that, okay? So can it be that easy? Yes, it actually can be that easy. Now, we have these really big damaged marks. Our biggest problem with these really big, long damaged marks is that this part looks lighter than this part, so we need to do repair and then basically do our heel brush to basically try to get the same you know tone or graphic I should say let's see so I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger and I might zoom in one let's see how we can do so I'm gonna get from here and kind of put it right there Remember, my goal is to, right now is to kind of get it covered up a little bit, but to also, my goal is to try to make the colors similar. So change the color, basically making it similar. Now, remember, you got to fix stuff like that. So if you get too close to a source that you shouldn't, perhaps, it's going to copy that part too, so just be aware of that. Okay, so then if I use the heel brush, see, whoop, got too close to that little mark there. See how the heel brush is basically getting to meld our colors together a little bit, a little bit better there. There you go. So, zoom out a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look like it's really fixing off properly to me. It still needs a little bit of work. So at least it's better than the big line that we had there, okay? Now let's talk about some of these scratches here. We're lucky he doesn't really have any issues in his face. Now let's go up and do our color and our white balance. Let's see. Let's see, I want it to have color temperature exposure let me see levels that might fix it for us let's see let's see so colors auto there you go so that looks more like a black and white picture now instead of what it looked like before which was more you know it for time had turned a little more yellow that can make it a little bit easier for us to work with it as well now one thing to do is if you do have anything that has an edge like this or like a pattern that could be used from someplace else. So if I use my clone, 
and I'll get it right on the line. So watch this, right on the line, do control for my source, and then put it right next to it, right above it. Then when I actually go across, look what happens. It can perfectly fix the line there. that It seem like a little bit of magic. It does feel like a little bit of magic, doesn't it? Let's see. So with a little bit of time, so we'll go from above. I don't mind for pictures or whatever that have certain imperfections, but when you can look at it and see it's been damaged not really an imperfection that's a this picture has been damaged whoop that is no that's that's a that's what oh that must be what he's kind of like standing in front of interesting all right let's see I think there's a few circles around his face does that look better already yeah fixing the edges there helps a lot you know it's not going to be a brand new picture or anything like that but just a few things can help and if you did have your subject which which were our next part we're going to do we could actually select him and kind of have him out of we could use layers to make it so we actually are trying to despeckle the background but it won't affect him in any way okay so let's go ahead and let's talk about that so we're going to go back and we're going to use our layers And we're going to talk about what layer mask is. Layer mask, in addition to the alpha channel, there is another way to control the transparency of a layer by adding a layer mask, which is an extra grayscale drawable associated uh, with the layer. A layer does not have a layer mask by default. It must be added specifically. Layer masks and how to work with them as described much more extensively in layer mask section. Layer mask, um, GIMP has uh, 21 layer modes okay so let's talk about separating the object from its background okay sometimes you need to separate the subject of an image from its background you may want to have the subject on a flat color or keep the background transparent so you can use it as an um, existing background or any other thing you have in mind to do this you must first use Kemp's selection tool the so-called marching ants to draw a selection around the subject this is not as easy a task and, and selecting the correct tool is critical you have several tools to accomplish this goal one is the selection tool 
the free selection tool allows you to draw a border uh, a, using another free hand or straight line. Use this when the subject is relatively simple shape. The intelligent scissor selection tool lets you select a free hand border and uses edge recognition algorithms to better fit the border around the object. Use this when the subject is complex but dis distinct enough against the current background. The foreground selection tool lets you mark as areas as foreground or the background and refines um, the selection automatically. All right, so let's talk about, um, the, well, let's just look at our different layers for right now. And I think we're going to use a different picture. Let's see. before okay it's the little boy that we're supposed to be using so let me get him in here two and three Oh, I think I remember now. I think I changed it so we do the, the girl with the straw. Yeah. There it is. Let's do uh, skin smoothing because that's a really fun way to do that because it's very colorful. Okay, so here's a girl here with our colorful straw. Let's talk about using selective colorization, okay? Good example of layer masking is doing selective colorization of an image. Selectively allowing a color to show through a mostly black and white image. So let's open a photo. We're going to go click where it says duplicate layer on the bottom right. You see this down here? It says duplicate layer. Create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. So we click right there. Then desaturize, saturate, I think I'm saying that wrong. The upper layer, click colors, desaturize, and desaturize. So colors, desaturize, and then Desaturize. And okay. So now it's black and white. Now, do you realize here's our layer? So if we turn this layer off, we see the color layer underneath. Okay. See? So I'm turning it back on. Add a layer mask to the desaturized layer. Click Add Layer Mask and choose White Full. Um, opaque C at this point the layers uh, dialog should look like this okay so we're going to choose the top one and say add a layer mask by clicking that button right there so we choose the top and we click here it says add layer mask and we want to say white which is the default and hit add Okay, and then it has that next to it. Okay, once it has that next to it, click the white square and layer to select it. Set your foreground color to black. White will do the opposite. We are using the the to we're going to use the paintbrush tool to paint areas of the image we want to color to show through from the layers below. 
okay click the paintbrush tool and paint over the subject basically we're going to be painting it black this allows those colors to show through from the layer below here are the results of the painting so basically we're going to be going over here and since we have chosen it to be white black will actually trans um, shine through okay so let me zoom in and our big point is to zoom in on her straw or make her straw transparent so if we get our paintbrush we choose black when we start to draw so I'm going to make it probably Is 20 on here. That's still too big, so I need smaller, about 10. Yeah, 10 should work. Okay, so I'm draw I'm basically painting the color black, but because our opposite is white, well, don't want to get too close with the lips. Now everywhere I paint is actually going to become transparent. So if I, I grab this and I went like this, that's what would happen, see? So we'll do undo. So if I zoom in, get my paintbrush, and make it smaller, I think a five would do. Now the good part is if you mess up, just swap by clicking the button there, and then you can go back and paint that area white, and it basically just like you're erasing it. Okay. Now we can also use any of our paint brushes over here. So I'm actually going to choose kind of one that has kind of a cool pattern to it. And I need to make it a lot smaller. Should work. So it actually will give it a little bit of texture. Because it's using that's not what I'm doing what I want it to do. Anyway, you can do that. If I do undo, let me choose a different pattern. <laughs> that's interesting. It's almost like now you're spray painting color on there even though you're not doing anything. See, this one is this is the one that has the lines. Isn't that cool? Alright, so let's go back to my brush. It has to be a lot smaller. I think five will do what I want it to. I want it to paint the drink. because the drink actually has plenty of texture. I don't have to do anything extra to it. I just got to paint it. So it looks like, of course, like, wow, how, how are you painting that, you know, the blue? I'm not, I'm actually just painting it transparent. So anything that I paint black that just means that that's going to be transparent.
once you learn this, um, there's a ton of things that you can do. In a second, we're going to work on somebody's uh, teeth to make them whiter. doing real good doing the outside layer but and do realize a lot of artists they do they have the pads which I have a pad too but I don't really use it much a drawing electric drawing pad because with the mouse it can be a little bit cumbersome here Again, this will not be perfect. This is me just kind of doing it fast for class and keeping things interesting at the same time. Also, I tried to stop and then start again the drawing because I know that when I hit undo, that's what they'll undo. So if I start now, so if I let go, start drawing I make a mistake oh no I didn't mean to do that then when I do undo it's just that one step okay so try to stop and then start again back and forth okay okay so that's kinda now when we zoom out now isn't that cool that looks like a magazine cover or something does it now the interesting part about it is I actually know that she's wearing like red lipstick and if we actually zoom in and give that color I'm not coloring all I'm doing is I'm making it transparent to the see if I cloak turn off the bottom layer that's what I'm actually doing see I'm actually this is what I'm really doing is drawing I'm erasing parts of the the thing to make them transparent and if I turn back on the pit the lower layer then boom it looks like that and that can be a good thing to make sure you get everything that you want alright so if we scroll down here you can see that I missed a lot of places here Let's see. I didn't quite get to the edge here Then we turn our lower layer back on and whoop that looks a little there we, go. we zoom out there you go it looks like an advertisement for a, uh, a McDonald's uh, blue flurry doesn't it <laughs> so there you go right there Oh, I know something neat we can do real quick. Whoop. 
So we got our glasses here, and if we actually import, and I think in this program it's a little bit cumbersome to do that. So let's see if I could do it real quick. I've got one that's clouds somewhere, let's see. Yeah. Okay, now there's a way, copy that, and then I switch back to her. I think I do paste as layer. There you go, paste as new layer. So if I switch these around and I put that cloud, so look, see I have that in, in the background, okay? Oh, that will look just blue, okay? Maybe I need to resize this. Let me see. Can I move it around? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that might do what I want it to. Let's see. Okay, so can you guess what I'm going to do? You can't guess what I'm going to do? Alright, so what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to uh, make it so that this the clouds go all the way through this top layer, okay, and through the bottom layer, and so you'll see the clouds at the very bottom, okay? So I'm gonna go to this layer here, and I'm actually gonna turn that into, have a layer mask as well, make it white, and then I'm gonna take my paintbrush, and I'm gonna draw in, whoop, I have to select it, sorry. Oh, hang on here. All right, what am I doing wrong? Oh, duh. <laughs> That's so funny. That's one of the things with layers. You kind of get like, well, which layer am I on? Okay, so I got this. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It's just quicker. Do it. Okay, what have I done? Hold on. There we go. And this will probably not be very perfect. We spent a little more time. It looks a little wonky there. And it can be bad to be zoomed out too far because then you have to move your hand too much. Or if I'm here, I'm moving my hand more. But I have more control because I'm zoomed in more. Okay, now, see if we can move the cloud. Nope, it's not what I want. And to where I want it to be. Yep, 
Yeah, there you go. You can clearly see that those are like clouds. Okay, so now we've got to go back up to the top here and do the same thing so that it goes all the way through. Oh, hang on. There you go. Oh no, I messed up. Hold on. Good. Okay. Now, make sure you're on the right layer where you start to work. Okay, now I can't give, I don't think I can give a better example. Oh, that's perfect. I don't think, you know, the around the edges, whoop, around the edges a little bit, need some work. And I think I went a little too far. Shoot. Here, because it's got a little pink to it. I could work on that a little more. All right, now. What about that? Ah. <laughs> do you like that? I hope you do. I think that's pretty cool. I might actually save that. And that's working with layers. So let's look and see what we have here. So we have our cloud layer, which did you see I got to move the cloud around by itself using the move tool up here. We went through here and if we get rid of the clouds, we can see that's our transparency here. We haven't done anything to this one except for making that part transparent with our layer mask. And then if we turn both of these off and just do the top one, you'll see that's all we did was we turned the top layer to we turn the top layer to black and white, okay? And then we did a layer mask and created a transparency, okay? And we did transparency for the glasses, and we did transparency for the lips and the, the drink straw and the cup. And if we just turn on the clouds, that's just the clouds. So look, because the clouds are the third layer and we've had the second layer turned off, but when we turn on the middle layer, boom, the middle layer allows the um, sunglasses through, but it just shows the, the, the lips and the drink, okay? So I think that's pretty cool, all right? So let's go ahead and I'm actually, let's talk to about our next part here. So this kind of is our example, it's showing a picture and it's one of those things where people say, how do you, how do you paint? Are you using the, the lightning tool, which we're about to 
make someone's teeth look brighter. It's like, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm actually using filters in the background, the layer, and using the layer mask to do those things. Okay. So to illustrate what we've done, here's layer mask. It said it painted to achieve the above results. And so you can use your the different brushes to give you all kinds of different textures. We could have chosen a different color than black to create the mask. If you wanted a slightly more muted color paint with a more uh, mild uh, gray versus black. So it gives you a whole lot more options too. So that's talking about layer masks and everything. Now there's quick mask mode, okay? And I, what I want to do is I want to do the teeth and I don't really have a bad red eye so I'm actually going to use the, the teeth example um, for the red eye. I guess I need to find um, some bad red eye and try to fix that, okay? But let's do our whitening the teeth instead. And I'm actually going to save this picture, which where we save stuff, it's going to talk about it in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now. So if I hit file and this answer, someone will say, hey, I don't want to do the save as because it's like I, I've heard it's, the pictures are compressed and it could be writing over and over and over and over the same thing. It's like, okay, well, we don't want that either because it could look worse and worse. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to save our program file and then we can come back and edit our program file as much as we want because it remembers all our different layers. It remembers all our different settings and we're going to export what we think our project is done. So when we hit save, it actually comes up and is going to save it as an XCF file. Now this was um, PowerPoint, it saved it as a PSD file, okay? So I'm actually going to do that and that means I can come back at any time and edit this if later on I say, you know what, I want to move the the, um, the clouds around or I want to use a different picture in the clouds and you're like, well, I don't want to have to reopen it, reset. Well, don't because you have a project file that you save it to and our export is what we do. So if let's say, um, uh, black, white, sun, glasses, in clouds. Okay. And that will save it as a PNG file or you can show uh, having a different file format as well. Okay. So I actually do want to select, I want to make it a JPG file. Uh, do I select JPG? I guess so. Or JPEG file. Did it just pass it? I think so. There it is. All right, so export. It'll ask me what quality. And we don't really have to deal with that much anymore. Say 100%. Export. There you go. Okay, now let's open the picture of the lake, the girl. There she is. So I have a girl here, very nice looking lady. But one of the problems is she does, her teeth are kind of yellowish, not, not as white as the person maybe would want us to see, okay? So we're gonna be using our, our mask, okay, to be able to do what we just did. But we're going to do it a little bit differently. Okay, this is similar to what we could have done with our soldier. If we had selected our soldier and put him on one layer and had the background another layer, then we could actually go in and use a bunch of the filters that we used earlier to try to despeckle all that, and it wouldn't affect his picture at all. So let's go ahead and let's add an, a, a layer mask. Let's say what color? We'll do white. Okay. Oh shoot. I need to duplicate. Okay. Hang on. Let me do one two there. Okay. So we have our layer we want. We want to duplicate our layer. So let's go here to our duplicate. Create a duplicate. We want our top to have a layer mask. Add a layer mask. Hit white. Said okay. Now 
what we're going to do is we're going to have to click your have to click see that's clicking the picture that's clicking the layer mask so I'm going to get my paintbrush and I'm just going to paint on her I'm actually going to turn the bottom layer off so I can clearly see what I am uh, doing okay I want to make my paintbrush smaller all right here we go so I'm actually going oop, I got to paint it black I'm actually going to make her teeth transparent just the teeth now of course the original picture is still there see so if I let that layer show it look like nothing happened so I want to turn that off right now and what we're going to do is we're going to do a filter on the bottom layer and change its color tone okay so yes is everything that we have covered going to lead into both our projects yes okay we just want it to affect the teeth so make sure you're just doing the teeth okay we don't want her gums to be you have the most beautiful bright pink gums I've ever seen people don't say that and that's not good and again if you're working too hard on something probably means that you need to zoom in That's so much easier now. Okay. I mean, there's apps that have stuff like this, but the interesting part about it is we have we have total control over it here, total. Okay. So that's kind of what our and I think I'm missing one little part here right there let me get that part real quick there you go okay so such a beautiful smile right there so if we turn on the bottom layer there you are we're back to where it was and what are we going to do well let's turn the let's unsee the top layer okay let's go to colors and let's see we can do anything we want actually let's see so make sure you had the bottom layer selected so if we do color balance uh, maybe exposure that could be pretty good and all we want is just to increase it a bit okay so if we go to reset here and let's just you know up it a little bit and that may not be what I want let's see color temperature no color balance no that's not really what I want either maybe the maybe the exposure was fine Let's see, brightness and con that's what we want. We just want to bright it up. Okay, so we've gone it to 30. Alright, now let's hit that's turn on the top layer and see what that looks like. <laughs> so it actually is controlling now that we have this selected it's only controlling her teeth see now is that cool you can make them any color you want look she got black teeth there you go aha uh -huh. all right so you can up the color if you want to because we're actually changing the background see but because it's bleeding through and we have her teeth selected that means that when we change we change the effect of the background picture that's what's going to bleed through okay let's see yeah that's way too much let's 
see. So this is the original. 30. I think about 50 is about right. What do you guys think? <laughs> Matt, you're welcome. Very, very welcome. Okay, so kind of getting close to the end of class here. So hopefully that's kind of helped you. So when we zoom out, can you tell the difference? Does that look better? I believe it does. Now you could play around with it. I think there was um, some other thing was like, oh, can you change the color of her eyes? Well, yeah, we could do that. So there's her teeth. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? And instead of trying to come up with some weird way to brighten, using a tool to brighten her teeth or paint her teeth white, all we did was we let it shine through and we let the filters do their job because they can do that a lot better than um, us painting paint or trying to figure out something like that. If you're trying to do any of that, you're working too hard. How about that? <laughs> Let's see. All right, so if we went up and we wanted to work on her eyes a little bit. Hey, the interesting part is if we actually did the uh, paint in her eyes. Hold on. Want to paint. <laughs> when I turn it on, oh no! See, that doesn't work well, does it? No, it doesn't. All right, so let's do undo. So I almost need to create another layer. So let's duplicate. All right. That's fine. Let's see. And whoop, move that to the bottom. Okay. And this time we're going to do her eyes. We'll have to add a layer mask to the second one. So this is the one with our good teeth. Okay. So you could rename it if you wanted to. Just so you don't get confused. So if I go here and I choose the layer mask. And I paint the eyes kind of sloppily though. Let's zoom in. Remember if you work if you're doing that, you're working too hard. Just let me do that. See if we can turn her eyes green. dark border and remember that's doing the transparent teeth uh, to the floor so I'm actually going to go there and then they do the erase there. So it'll bleed through from the bottom one. Looks like I missed a few on this one here.
right, now that the bottom layer will now bleed through, let's choose the bottom layer. We'll zoom out. And we've selected the bottom layer, so now let's mess around with the color. Mm. So let's let's do a color change. Eye color change. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's see. Wait, have I got the wrong one? Oh, it's just not really affecting. It's not affecting the eye color much. That's funny. It's not really. At least, at least not, not this one. All right, so let's do a different color here. Let's see, temperature. Hmm. We need the drastic thing. Let's see, color eyes. There we go. That's what we want. Ah, there you go. Too blue. Oh, she's got mean eyes. Trying to go for a little bit more realistic, but it looks like it doesn't want to do that. Interesting. It's like a hazel. Let's see, green eyes. Okay, that's kind of blue. Hmm. Okay, that kind of gets what I want. All right, so if we zoom out. know why it does that sometimes it's like I've clicked too many times it does this extreme zoom out there we go so see if I can do before here hmm, can't really do a before because I've already stepped that way anyway so here we go our teeth are fixed our eye color is a little bit bluish Okay, so there we go right there. So the biggest recommendation I can is just kind of download some stuff, play around with it, come up with a really good project to work on, you know, and kind of have fun with it. So we already talked about saving. So I'm kind of sending you in the direction of if you do want to go take your pictures and get those printed, but we'll talk more about that and our printing class and everything. So, any questions?
Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, we covered a lot in this class. We worked a lot of, of blemishes out, made some fun uh, projects, worked on some stuff. <laughs> so one of my favorites right there. That's pretty neat. And then we made a little bit, a few little changes. So yeah, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Hope you learned something new. Tell you about some of our other classes that we have coming up next week. So next week we'll be doing let's talk about Libby, uh, free eBooks and audio books and stuff. Also we'll be doing the cord cutting classes, the streaming and the antenna on the 21st as well and we'll be doing a gadget help now the last month uh, week in the month we're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff gadget help chess uh, basics of instapot class a basics of air frying as well so come join me for that a little side note our libraries are open with limited services and hours you can go to GCHRL for more details or call into the library Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hope you learned something new. Hope you enjoyed my class, or our class, I should say. And uh, keep going on. And like I said, we actually have a video editing class that we have coming up and probably next month and a little bit further into printing some of the projects that you've done. Maybe give them as a gift or something. So thank you for joining me this week. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. So have a great uh, day, have a great Friday, have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe and everything, and enjoy our good weather that we're having right now. <laughs> so until next time, bye-bye. See you next time. Bye.